Hi, welcome to the second of my uh, data visualization with ggplot um, <coughs> videos. These are intended for complete beginners, so um, I'm assuming you've seen the previous one, um, but I will try as I go to repeat myself and say things that I've said in earlier videos before, and I will, as I go, explain very, very basic things in R. So if you're not a novice, uh, that would be why. If um, why you're hearing things that you already know. If you're a complete beginner, hopefully this is uh, of value to you. One thing I want to call attention to in this uh, in this one is this link here. So djnavarro.link/robusttools is the uh, site where I keep all of the resources associated with the class. So that includes all the slides, links to the R Studio project, and so on. So okay, let's get going. Uh, the project for this one uh, is here. So this this project, so RStudio Cloud project slash 901,338 um, is where all the resources are for this module. Um, I would normally just click on this to get it started, but um, because it takes a moment to load up, I'm just going to tab over to one I opened earlier. So here we are. This is our, our workspace. I'm going to, I hate that opening, that um, welcome message, so control L to clear the screen. And now what I'm going to do is very briefly recreate the plot that I made in the last video, but this time I'm going to do it as part of an R script so that we've got a permanent record of our, uh, of what we're doing. So to do that, I'm just going to go uh, File, New File, R Script. Note that there's a keyboard shortcut. I could have just gone Control Shift N, but I'm going to do it the slow way. Okay, so every time I start an R Script, I usually start with a comment. Comments begin with the what I call the hash sign. Other people call the pound sign, and other people just call like the hashtag. Um, anyway, the point is that sign there. Oh, it's also called an Oxythorpe. I think it's got like a million names. Anything that starts with that character. Um, R will ignore. It is a comment. It is intended for the human reader. And it's important to comment your code well. So let's say I, I will type something here that says a script to draw my first oops first plot. Okay, and I would usually put in things like author Danielle. I would add a whole bunch of other information about the script. Maybe I would include contact information. It depends on what you're going to do with it, but there should be some header information that explains to you, to your uh, reader, what this script is for. Um, it's probably not a bad idea to include the date. So I'm currently doing this on, I think it's like March something or other. I don't even know. That's obviously not the date, but. It's March, and it's in 2020. So, 3030? Sure. It's in March 2020. That's the gist of what you would have at the start. Next, I'm going to have a note that says, well, the first, that tells people the first thing I'm going to do is going to be to load the packages. I'm just going to leave all my typos in this. I need, I'm a terrible typist with this keyboard because it's not my regular one. Uh, the key thing for that is the library command. Um, so again, it's opening a parenthesis to start a command, and the name of what I of the packages I want to load. Helpfully, R is giving me a hint there. Tidyverse. What's that? Okay. So now, um, okay, the typo is annoying me. Packages I need. There we go. I can't stand it. I can't. I can't. Load. The next comment is going to be draw the plot that I want. So if you remember from last time, what we were doing was using ggplot as the function. Open that and we went data equals the data we were going to use as the mile per gallons data set. And then we were going to add a geom that corresponds to a set of points for a scatter plot. So we'll go geom point And to 
In order to draw the scatter plot, what we need to do is create a mapping from our data to the relevant uh, parts of the plot. So it's an aesthetic mapping, like the aesthetics of the things on the plots. So we go mapping equals AS. I don't know how to pronounce it. And on the X axis, we were going to plot the um, size of the engine, which is the engine displacement, I guess, uh, and HWY for highway. So that's the um, overall uh, highway fuel efficiency uh, for this. So now we have the exact same command that I had before, but it's organized into a script and it's nicely formatted in a way that you know makes it relatively easy to read. So there's the main command, uh, geom point is being added to it, mapping is part of your, and here's the technical term, call to geom point um, or your command that uses geom point. Again, to, as, as I go, I'm trying to explain terminology. These things, every time I've got something here that says data equals or mappings equals, um, these things are the arguments of a function. So arguments are the way of saying inputs. So what I need to do is say that, okay, for the, for the data argument, we're going to input the MPG or miles per gallon data set. Okay. So that's the structure of our command here. What I want to do is save it and I'm going to call it myfirstplot.r. You can see that I've taught this class before. Um, so I'm just going to overwrite that one and call it myfirstplot.r again and go save. And this says, in my case, this file already exists. Do you want to replace it? Yes, I do. Okay. You should probably call yours something slightly different if you're using um, this workspace. Okay, so um, here we go. Let's, oh, so I've saved that. Sorry, I'll save it again. To run it, to make this script do what I want it to is slightly strange. What I could do is this. I could grab the commands that I want. So I'll select it like that, just using the keys. And then I could click on this run uh, button here. And what you'll see is it sends each of those commands one by one to the R console, right? And over here, you see it draw the same plot on the right that we saw last time. Now for you, I can't see this by the way, but I'm guessing that from what you can see, you've got my face sitting somewhere over here on the right hand side and it's in the way of the plot. In a moment, I'm going to show you how to move things around so that we don't have my face over the top of the plot. Um, but for now, let's just live with it. We're not doing anything uh, super exciting right now with this plot. Okay. So when we run something from the uh, from our script like that, it's basically just copied and pasted everything that we had in our uh, file and it sent it to the console exactly as if we had typed it ourselves. Yeah. That is uh, one way of uh, doing things, but it's kind of annoying um, because I sort of don't need the output to show me everything that I typed. Like I know what I wrote, it's in my script. So let's try and do the same thing another way. Control L to clear my screen. Let's go back to my source window. Okay, this time, the source pane, sorry I should say, but here if I click on the button that says source, and you'll notice the, the tooltip here that says source the contents of the active document. That's what we want to do. What that's going to do is send all of these commands to the R console, but it's not going to tediously show you the app, like all of the typing. It's just going to act as if you typed them. Okay, so let's just press that button, and it seems to have done something, but it's hard to tell because if it drew the plot, it's the exact same plot as last time. That's really irritating. So here is how we deal with that. Let's just click on this little broom here. Ah, clear all plots. Clear all the plots in the plot history. Yes, let's do that. Okay, let's try that again. Source. What? For once, this error was deliberate. Why did that not work? 
it feels like it should work, right? Because you've got this command here that draws your plot. And if I go run and tell it to run that bit, I get my plot. The problem, or the, the problem here, is that when you type something directly into the console, R automatically prints uh, the, um, the results. And for a plot object, uh, that's the technical term there, for a ggplot object, um, the printing action is what creates your figure. So when I typed it directly here, the figure or the graph automatically appears here on the right. When I'm doing that from the uh, from a from a script like this, that doesn't happen if I press if I click source. I could make it happen. And here, there's a source with echo button, right? And if I pressed that, you would see it type everything literally, and that reproduces the plot. Let's clear it. But what you want to be able to do, what I want to be able to do here, is to just have the plot show up. I don't want any of the rest of this. I just want my plot. So let's do that. Here's how you do it. First, we're going to go we'll go back up here and we're going to type in the word picture and every now and then I forget that I have two keyboards here. Okay. So I type so we'll go picture and then I do something funny. Go I type in a vis like visually type in a little arrow with a less than sign and then a, a hyphen. You can't put spaces in here. You have to have the those two right next to each other. R treats this as a um, technical term again, assignment operator. What it's going to do is take all of the output or all of the actions that are being done by this command here that I'm highlighting and they are going to be stored inside sort of a variable called picture or an object called picture. So Let's save our script again, go to there, and then we go source. It still doesn't show the plot. There's no plot. But now you see over here in the environment pane, there is a thing called picture. And it's saying apparently that it's a list of nine. And if you really, really wanted to, you could sort of just tip, you know, click on that and go, oh my god, there's a bunch of garbage in there. Um, all of that stuff that's in there is all of the raw information that's required to construct the scatter plot. But frankly, I find it really ugly, so I'm going to close it again so that that goes away. And I'll press on this to bring back my little uh, window. There we go. So we've created an object, like an R object called picture, that we now want to print. So you might not be super surprised that if I go, if I say, and I've again forgotten what keyboard to use, print the uh, ggplot object. Okay, so down here, I'll we'll just <coughs> give ourselves a little bit of room there, and then go print. See, I'm, I'm not good with this keyboard, I'm telling you. It's, I'm sorry. Print, per inter, yeah, I can type things, print, picture. When we print the picture, it's going to create the, the picture. So now I'm saving it. You notice I didn't use the menus here. I just clicked, um, I used the shortcut key, which is control S to save. And then I'm going to do, the, I'm going to use the shortcut key to source as well. So I'm going to first go control L to clear my console and then control shift S sources the script. And now what you can see is that it's created the plot on the right and it hasn't printed anything except the plot. So the only thing that's being printed in the output here is the picture. So that is the gist of how we create uh, an R script to do our plotting. As a general rule, when we are doing things in R, we want to work within R scripts. It is a lot easier for somebody else to pick up later on. It's easier to read, so we've got information there that tells what's going on. It is just, in general, better for the purposes of reproducible research to have 
clear scripts that organize all the content that you're creating. Okay, so now that we've got things in script, I'll end this one and then we will start on the next one in just a second. Well, for me anyway.